Yes, I am still doing favorite book reviews. I have quite a few of them still. But before I get to that, I would like to say, first of all, hello to the 401 of you who are now subscribed to me. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing and watching and commenting and doing all the things that you YouTubers like to do. You make what I'm doing worthwhile. And now on to today's favorite book, The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Juster. You were expecting something different, weren't you? Yeah, because in the last book review I said I was going to be reviewing A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. The Phantom Tollbooth is a retroactive addition to the favorites list. Obviously, I knew about it, I remembered reading it, and I really remembered enjoying it, but I didn't remember really a lot about it, and so I didn't add it to the favorites list at first. And then I found it at a bookstore for a relatively low price, I bought it, I read it, and I remembered why I had enjoyed it before, and remembered that it was, in fact, a favorite. And I did all of that before finishing A Little Princess, so we put Phantom Tollbooth in at this point. Yay, consistency! The Phantom Tollbooth is one of those books that is fairly well known, but it's not a household name, and it really should be. The book follows the story of Milo. Now, Milo is a little boy who has lost interest in pretty much everything. He's bored with school, he's bored with play, he's bored with... everything. One day, he comes home from school in his usual state of apathy to find a large package addressed to him. Within the package is a toll booth, and this toll booth leads to Lands Beyond. Milo sets off through the toll booth to explore Lands Beyond and encounters a number of colorful characters, including Tok, a watchdog who is very sensitive to people who waste time, or worse, kill time. A talkative and somewhat silly but all-around likable insect called the Humbug. And the three of them must adventure together to bring rhyme and reason back to the land. Literally, they have to go to the castle in the air on top of the Mountains of Ignorance to find Princess Rhyme and Princess Reason and bring them back. Because you see, without rhyme or reason, this land is in turmoil. The kingdoms of Dictionopolis, land of words and letters and ruled by King Azaz the Unabridged, and Digitopolis, land of numbers and ruled by his brother, the Math the Magician, are at war with each other concerning which one is best, letters or numbers. So, it's a fun book. I mean, this book is just fun. It's simple, it's straightforward, there's nothing overly complicated in the narrative or the structure or anything. It's just fun. And this is probably the first book that really gave me my love for puns. Just to illustrate this, let me tell you about some of the people and places you encounter in this book. First, there's the Weatherman. Not to be confused with the Weatherman. Because you see, it's more important to know whether there will be weather than what the weather will be. There's also the Witch. The woman whose job it is to choose which word is best for any given occasion, but who is later ostracized and referred to as a witch. And of course you have some of the places, like the Island of Conclusions, which you can only get to by jumping. The Doldrums, where thinking is punishable by law. The Kingdom of Dictionopolis, where you must eat your words. So if you're ready to eat lunch, then you should probably say something like roast beef sandwich on a Kaiser roll. And the Land of Infinity, which you can always approach but never quite reach. And of course you have the Mountains of Ignorance, which hold a whole slew full of demons. One of the things that I really like about this novel is that it is incredibly creative. There is a lot of really, really creative stuff in Lands Beyond. For example, children don't grow up, they grow down. They are born with their heads hovering at the height they will eventually be, and they are considered fully grown when their feet finally touch the ground. The colors of the sunrise and sunset are actually played into existence by musicians, and sounds are collected and distributed by a number of different people. So like I said, there's not a whole lot to analyze in this book. The message is pretty simple and straightforward. It's essentially a learning-can-be-fun type of book, except that it's not insufferable. So if you're looking for a light, fun, and yet smart and creative read, then The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Juster would be the book for you. Tell your friends. That's that, and the next favorite books review will actually be A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett, unless I find another favorite buried somewhere that I didn't know about. See you next time.